Welcome back. I'm Dr. Judy Salinger. I'm clinical director of Lasting Recovery. Um, I'm a licensed marriage family therapist, certified addiction specialist, and of San Diego's premier holistic outpatient alcohol and drug treatment program. And I've been working with addictions for more than 25 years. And we offer you hope and give you and your families the tools to reclaim your lives. So Lasting Recovery is also nationally accredited by CARF, which is the Commission on Accreditation of Rehabilitation Facilities. And um, we uh, are holistic and individualized treatment here in San Diego. We offer family education, um, women's uh, uh, program in the morning. We offer a teen after school program. Um, and uh, co-ed evening program, and we've got just a wonderful team of people. We have, um, we've just, Ed and I were just talking about, you know, the benefits of effective detoxification and, and really what that is, you know, um, to whatever your image is of detoxification, we want to tell you that it's, it, what detoxification does is, is a way for you to very calmly and smoothly, actually, it's not like any pictures that you've seen on television, to work through the, the withdrawal syndrome of the uh, chemicals that you're addicted to. And uh, it's not meant to punish you or make you suffer in any way. And, and actually the process is, is a very, um, uh, can be a very slow and comforting process. And, and it's a way for you to make that transition uh, into an effective and um, powerful uh, recovery process. Mm -hmm. And um, Ed, you were mentioning about you know how some people you know they've seen people just you well, know. True. I mean, we, we have an image. I know yeah. you know we have an image of, of the person flapping around the ground, going through their own detox, and, and you know many addicts and alcoholics do try uh, to do administer their own detox. Yes. And they will uh, change what substances they're using. They will go out and try to maybe, you know, steal your husband or your wife's Valium and take one or two. You're doing self-prescription. And, and, and it's a goal to try to do it, but it seems to, it doesn't seem to. It always leads back to that heavier use than before. Yeah. And so to really take these myths away from detox and talk about how, how science has advanced in such a way that we have holistic detox, we have medical detox, that understands, as you just mentioned, a key word is about the shaming. It's not about beating up on someone. It's about giving yeah. them that opportunity to, to, to have professionals surround them and aid them in the, so they can reach the goal that they really wanted to get to on their own. Exactly. And that's to be free of the substance and to live a different kind of life. And right. that can be done today. And I think there's just science has changed so much, but some of the movies haven't. Yes, that's true. And, you know, there, there are those times when people can go into a seizure and die. I mean, mm -hmm, that's what people mm -hmm. need to know. That's what you need to know driving your car here is that if you're drinking and you've tried to stop before and you find yourself getting the shakes and getting really anxious and then people, then you may have had a drink, stopped and, you know, said, well, I need to have another drink so that I can stop this shaking. And that's just as a symptom of the fact that it has really made, um, you know, changes in your body chemistry and your brain chemistry, your nervous system. And this is at a point where people can really, you know, go into a sure. seizure. And um, this is a point where you need to call and um, go through the withdrawal uh, s syndrome with a professional, exactly. a, and a I, medical you know, professional. Sadly to say, many people, we look at some suicides that happen within the addictions and within the addiction, yes. and many people are getting to that point. They don't know how to get out. They don't have that assistance to be able to ask for help, and they don't, know, they don't think there is a way out. Right. And, and there is a respectful detox. There's a healthy detox that can really open the door for them and, and allow them to walk through that arch of free man and woman. And, yes. and I mean, that's a guarantee. That is. That's a guarantee. And I mean, they have to do their part. But from the science part, from the holistic part, from the good recovery sources, you know, and lasting recovery is there to be able to offer them. You know, they can do I mean, my message, if anything, today is, is like set aside the old thoughts that you have. If yes. you're out there and you're using, if you're a man, woman, a young adult, and you're out there using and you don't want to use it anymore, you do not have to use again. That's right. That is so true. And, and talking about, you know, like walking through this as a free person. And this is what we see on the other side. We see that people go through this this process of the withdrawal from the, of the chemicals from your body. And we see the smiles on your face. Mm -hmm. We see how good people feel. And they say, I've never felt this good before. I didn't know that I could feel like this. And, mm -hmm. and I was afraid. Um, and they say, I'm, I'm, I walked through it. And so what people find is that they're very often almost addicted to the fear 
of, of not being able oh, to have it. For sure. Yes. I mean, it is a fear. You just mentioned, I never knew I could feel like this. Never yes. knew means from zero to, to this point of reference. Yes. And, and so what you're doing is you're taking them into a new place that they've never been before. Yes. Yes. And it's not about going back and recovering something from the past. It's about being introduced to a new way of living. And I don't mean this in a, in a really far out, weird sign of kind of sense. A new way of living that you've always probably, deep down inside, thought there might be something like this. Yes. But you didn't know, ever know how to get there. Exactly. You know, it, this is about getting out of the box. Because mm -hmm. when we're in our addiction, we're trapped, we're isolated. And Ed and I were talking earlier. And, and when I was in my addiction, I had... Um, an addiction for 10 years to codeine and Valium. It was given to me for medical reasons, and it immobilized me. And I was isolated. I, I couldn't um, walk very well. I had a very difficult time walking. I was isolated, um, scared, lonely, um, alone. And I had to begin creating some other kind of life, either that or I was going to kill myself. Mm. And I decided that after reading a lot of, of very uh, interesting books. I, I had been with somebody who was a salesman and uh, brought in all these books about, you know, uh, Think and Grow Rich, um, which was just about how to live, you know, what, and prosperously within yourself. Um, you can make your own miracle um, um, books on you can heal your life. Uh, some of Ernest Holmes' teachings, different people um, who had made huge changes in their lives as a result of changing their thinking. Mm -hmm. And I began working with that. And um, as, as I started to think about what I felt hopeless about was that I couldn't walk, that I couldn't work, that I couldn't have a family, and that I would be trapped in this little, you know, kind of a, a home forever and ever, mm -hmm. um, began creating, if I could, if there was just a possibility that I could change my thinking, what would I want in my life? It's so powerful that, that you can sit here even on the airways and share that and, and share that, that if I could, because so many of the addict alcoholic and the abusers, I mean, we don't need to go all the way to the addict alcoholic who's fully over the line, but right. many abusers um, maybe feel what you're feeling and it's going to be really interested, I think, for those people to hear. What was that like for you? Well, it was it was terrible. I mean, you know, the, the, the depression, the feeling of isolation, the what's the use, why bother, that every day it's like I couldn't get, get myself going. And, mm -hmm. and it was the what's the use, why bother, I, I might as well just give up, I might as well have, you know, another drug. And um, I, as I started the process, it was a lot of hard work. I, I felt like I was weaving um, new pathways in my brain is what mm -hmm. it felt like. Mm -hmm. I was learning a new language. I was learning how to talk to myself well, differently. How was that? How where were you learning from? From the books? Or I from was learning the from the books. Messages well, I was learning from the books, and I was internalizing them, and I would say these affirmations over and over and over mm -hmm. again. I would visualize myself walking. I would visualize my legs working. So deep down inside, then, if I may interrupt, because sure. it was so important, deep down inside, you... You just sort of knew that there was something else, some other No, I had to living? believe it. I had to believe it. I had to read it, and then I had to fake it till you make it, okay? Because okay? I didn't okay. believe. I mean, I did not believe that there was anything within myself mm -hmm. that could change it. When I realized that there was a power within me that could change things, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. read about other people who had done that, then I said, well, I can do that for myself. Wow. I read one of the things, uh, the book that was really significant was something by Napoleon Hill when he said, about you can create a miracle. And he talked about his son who was born without ears. Mm. But he believed that his son was going to be able to hear. And he kept saying that over and over again. And he told his son, you know, when you get to hear, then things, this will happen and that will mm -hmm. happen. And his son developed the first hearing aid. Oh. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. So that he could hear. But it was the fact that when you say these things over and over to yourself, like learning anything, mm -hmm. whether we're learning a new language or we're learning math or we're learning science, it becomes part of how we think and how we live our lives. Well, how about somebody who doesn't have those kinds? I mean, it seems like you're almost like blessed with those kinds of messages. But would you say the lasting recovery then is would be a source where if someone who doesn't have that message but really wants to hear something could that's, come? Where that's they right. Could they, they could. I, I started lasting recovery because I believe that you can have a lasting recovery. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be temporary. It doesn't have to be short-lived, that it can be lasting. I wrote a book called Fearless Change, Embrace the Choice to Reinvent Your Life. Mm -hmm. And in that book, I put a lot of the things that I had to learn in order to, to make myself change 
and to, to get sober and to begin thinking about myself in a different way. Mm-hmm. And um, it, I, it was a way that I could communicate to my clients um, the, the many tools that are necessary in terms of learning how to reframe your, your thinking and learning how to ask for what you want and learning how to listen to your body. And when your body, what's your body saying to you? Because your body's always talking. You know, when I was in my addiction, my body just kept saying, I'm anxious and, you know, I need more alcohol or I'm anxious and I need another tranquilizer. And I had to learn how to say to myself, I am calm. Mm -hmm. I, Judy, am calm. I am calm and relaxed. And I had to believe that there was something in myself that was calm and it go into my heart. Well, that's incredible because I I, I, am very, very familiar with addiction also. I didn't come from that. I came from... As my friend Herb Kagan uh, talks about, is that I didn't know that I didn't know, and mm-hmm. I couldn't see that I couldn't see. Yes. And I was stuck in that box yeah. until people came and introduced me. Uh, I, I I didn't have those kind of visions like you're having, you know, or not vision, but the kind of messages that you know I could do this. Until that one night when the guy said to me, "Well, what do you think about getting some help?" and I said. Well, what would uh, what would my boss think? And he says, "Well, Ed, he said you haven't been to work for a week. It's a little mm, late to think about yes. him." And I thought, "Okay, what would my family say? Like if they lived right around the corner, but it was you know thousands of miles away?" And he stopped me, mm-hmm. and he said the message that changed my entire life. He says, "And what do you think?" Mm-hmm. Which is similar. I, I didn't mm-hmm. have oh, yeah. a, I surely didn't have the 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 mental knowledge, but I was able to <coughs> excuse me reach down inside and think. I can do this. Yes. Whatever this meant. Right. The, you know, and, and having people come around, I did have some people that I had spoken mm-hmm. with uh, that helped to introduce me to some of these other ideas. It wasn't just something that I picked up and went to the library with, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's, it's so those, important. It is. The, the, the important piece is that you've, you've got to find, uh, th- know that there is a way to get out. Or that if you can hear it from somebody else who tells you you're mm-hmm. stuck. Mm-hmm. And that there's a way out. You you got to work at believing them, um, that they can show mm-hmm. you and introduce you to the people, the books, the meetings, the whatever it is. The treatment and that may centers. not be your family. Also, I mean, I hate to sort of say that in times, but you oh, know yeah. the truth of the matter is it may not be your. We're not talking at all. I mean, I love the families and family system, but it's like, you know, um, it may not be your family. Ex- you may have to find some outside source to be able to guide you. That is very true, Ed. And so if you've just tuned in, you're listening to Lasting Recovery. I'm Dr. Judy Salinger, licensed marriage and family therapist and addiction specialist and clinical director of Lasting Recovery. And I have with me today Ed Lacey, who is an international addictions consultant. And um, uh, Ed has been here to to help uh, give us some guidance here as we talk about uh, relapse and um, th- those things that you can do to prevent a relapse and how you can move on into a process of recovery. And Lasting Recovery is that we're a nationally uh, accredited holistic individualized treatment program for substance use disorders located in San Diego. And um, we're at www.lastingrecovery.com. That's a fairly easy one to remember. And so today um, we're talking about um, our phone number here is 858 858- Four five three four three one five at Lasting Recovery and Tamara, who is our admissions person, our intake person, she would be very glad to answer any questions that you have, and um, there's no obligation for you to give us a call, and we would love to be able to help you and at least give you some direction and guidance, and that's part of our service. Ed is that mm-hmm. we we have a referrals uh, network of people that we refer to. Um, you know, some of the free services in town, the County of San Diego, for example, has lots of free services of very low cost, and we're able to refer people to some of those services. And you have um, some exciting services like Active Recovery, which is connected to you yes, also. Yes, we huh? do. Active Recovery is a, a wonderful program, a wellness uh, programming, wellness education, and um, uh, we offer that to uh, the people in our program. We've got uh, groups on education for um, alcoholism mm-hmm. and uh, drug addiction. We could, we just call it addiction. And we've got recovery. We've got relapse prevention. We've got family education. So um, interesting. Dr. Judy Salinger with Lasting Recovery. Mm-hmm. 